Reddit. What's your best, no time to explain, let's go story? I'll start. Happened back when I was 16 to 17. Was hanging late one night at an out-of-the-way basketball court with three of my very attractive female friends. We were just shooting some hoops and talking when someone suggested a game of strip basketball. The three girls wanted to be on a team together, so they told me I could go choose anyone I wanted for my second. Naturally, I bolted for my high school's basketball team captain's house. Pounded on his door at 10 p.m., sweating and out of breath, and said, No time to explain. Let's go. I didn't know him very well, and he had no reason to go with me, but we were both happy he did. The girls weren't happy with my choice, but they kept their word, and we got a nice show. Your turn. A few years back, my brother pulled up to my house with a paintball gun and told me to get in. He hands me the gun and says, you'll know when to shoot. We go on a short drive to a corner where some kids began to egg his truck. I knew when to shoot. My archaeology crew and I were stuck in La Paz, Bolivia because of civil unrest that cut the roads leading to our dig site. We had been hanging out in La Paz for two weeks, trying to stay as warm as possible and waiting for any opening in the demonstrations. The Bolivian army fired into a crowd, killing several demonstrators, and both sides called a truce for 24 hours. That morning, our professor ran into our rented apartment and yelled for us to grab all our gear. We have five minutes to leave. We had no idea what was going on. The prof took the next combi, and my poor Spanish skills meant I couldn't ask questions of my fellow passengers. We boarded one of the first combis out of La Paz and headed out to the Altiplano. On the road, we passed huge roadblocks, burning tires, piles of broken glass, and various debris with just enough room for a small car to make it through. We made it far enough to hike the remaining 12 hours to the site next day, and then we started digging. Went to a bar with some friends and my parents in my hometown for my 21st birthday. Turns into a good six hours of drinking. Went to the bathroom, and while closing the lid after finishing, the entire bottom of the bowl shatters. I was legally drunk for my first time at said bar, and proceeded to urge very loudly that we needed to leave. No, I don't think you understand. I destroyed a toilet. Let's go. A group of bigots named Homo Sex is Sin visit Georgia Tech about every year to tell everyone why gays will burn in hell, women engineers are witches, blah blah blah. When I saw they were in front of the student center, I ran back to my place to find my camera and stereo. My friend was passed out right next to both items, still hung over from the night previous. I shook him and said, put on the smallest boxers you own and follow me. This is what happened. What follows is a link to a video where the two men are dancing in their smallest boxers in front of the bigots, set to techno music as a crowd cheers them on. Godspeed, you beautiful people. When I was eight, my parents took me over to their friend's house for an early dinner party. They had a daughter my age who was also my friend. She was really into animals and nature, so she wanted me to go with her about a block down her street to investigate a bird's nest she saw earlier in a tree. We go, she starts climbing while I'm on the ground watching. Then, about half a block away, this hippie-looking surfer dude with long blonde hair and wearing nothing but shorts walks out of his house and notices us. I notice him for about two seconds and then look back up in the tree at my friend. Next, I hear a loud whistle, and when I look back in the direction of the surfer dude, he has his shorts down around his ankles with his willy whacker out in all its glory. I yell, RUN! My friend is clueless, but somehow she manages to jump out of the tree and we run back to her house as fast as our pint-sized legs will carry us. Luckily, my dad and her dad were right inside, and when I yelled, there's a naked man chasing us, they were outside almost immediately. They find the surfer dude standing right in front of their driveway. I remember my dad saying, hey man, are you pulling your pants down in front of children? And the guy responding with something like, screw you man, and then walking away. The amazing thing is that we called the cops and they came over to file a report, but they recommended not pressing charges because the guy knew where we lived and might seek revenge. This was back in the mid-1970s. Hurricane Charlie was going to do a normal ride out the storm situation and play video games and eat junk food all weekend while it rained outside. I got a call from a buddy who said the hurricane just turned 90 degrees and made landfall in Senebel, like 20 to 25 miles away. I rushed into my roommate's room and said, grab two days worth of clothes, we're getting the heck out of here. When we came back to the house, it had been destroyed. The roof leaked and held water in the ceiling until it completely caved in, completely destroying everything we had in there. Not sure if this counts, but I was in high school and espied a hot girl waiting for the bus. 
being me and knowing I would just awkward all over myself if I tried things the normal way, I got on my best panicked face, ran up to her, and said, Quick! Quick! There's no time! I need your phone number! She blurted it out, I actually kept it in my head until I could get it down on paper, and called her that night. We've been together for 13 years. I own a skate shop, and it was also a popular hangout for skater kids. I was off one day, and I get a call from an ecstatic skate kid that sounded in panic, saying, Get to the shop now! Click. I rush down there two minutes later. Anthony Kiedis walks into the shop. One of the kids had run into him in town and convinced him to come into the shop. All the skater kids are in my shop behind the counter with my employee, pretending to work on things, put skateboards together, etc. It was hilarious to see them try to act naturally, and we all got to have a good conversation with Anthony Kiedis about skating, paddleboarding, and kiteboarding. He signed a girl's skate deck for our wall of fame that I still have. He's been back every year since then and is a regular customer. This past summer, I delivered paddleboards out to his vacation home. For the uninformed like I was before I read this post, Anthony Kiedis is the lead singer of Red Hot Chili Peppers. And now, it's time for a pheasant tangent. Got a phone call from my sister one evening, and when I picked up the phone, she was clearly running and out of breath. I could just make out her saying, open the front door before the line went dead. So I ran to the front door, picking up the heaviest thing I could find along the way. It was a climbing helmet. Wrenched the door open and moved out the way just in time to see her bolting into the house past me. I slammed the door and wait for her to catch her breath. <sighs> there was a giant pheasant chasing me all the way from Tesco. Don't worry, ma'am. I've got this. With that, I donned the climbing helmet and told her to call the police if I wasn't back in five minutes. When I was a kid, my village had an evil jerk of a pheasant that would chase old ladies down the street. You could look out of the window, and it would be strutting around the village square waiting for a pensioner to attack. Anyway, one day I was out in the garden with my dad, who was plucking a dead pheasant, and this devil bird jumped up onto the high fence and looked at us. I'm not kidding when I say it had the craziest look in its eye. I asked my dad to use my water pistol to blast it, so he pumped it to full power and shot the pheasant in the chest. This crazy bird just gripped the fence for the entire time it was being savaged by the jet of water from my Super Soaker 2000. It didn't fall off, and only flew off of its own accord about 10 minutes later. Then a day later I saw it dead in the road. When I was about 13, my buddy and I rode our bikes to the local Kmart to be bored, obnoxious teenagers. Real quick, this story is from 11 years ago, so oh my god, I feel old now. Anyway, tossed some Nerf footballs over the aisles, ran around, mocked things. Then I thought it would be funny to spray my buddy with the perfume sample. He didn't think it was funny at all and started chasing me. I ran and hid, and the hunt was on. Using his finest ninja skills, he snuck around until he saw me, crouched down in the hardware aisle. He crept up behind me, put his butt right next to my head, and let rip. He turned around to gloat, and it wasn't me. Just some poor schmuck looking at hammers. The next thing I know, he runs by me. We gotta go, we gotta go, we gotta go. I was in high school, and my friend came running up to me and said, No time to explain. I need your shoes. I spent the rest of the day walking around the school in socks and some makeshift shoes made out of a cardboard box. I later found out that the reason why my friend needed my shoes was so that he could participate in his chem lab class and not fail due to his not wearing shoes. Me and my friend are heading to Sonic for lunch. Suddenly he screams, PULL OVER! Pointing across the road and across two lanes of traffic. Why? No time to explain! Go! So I hit the gas and barely avoid getting creamed. Across the way, I see what he noticed first. A man holding down a woman in the dirt near the ditch beside the road and striking her. We start to get out, he sees us, lets her go, and gets in his car. A moment later, another car pulls up and some older women swarm over the struck woman as he begins to drive away. We hop in our car and give chase. I hand him my phone, he calls the cops. We end up leading the way on a car chase with officers slowly assembling en masse behind us. Finally, we chase him to a house and block the driveway with our car as he gets out and runs behind the house. Knowing we have no right to chase, we let the police take it from there, but we checked the car. It had kids in it. The police interviewed us later, told us that the kids belonged to the woman, and if we hadn't followed the man, they might not have found the car. Felt like big heroes. Best part was, on the way home, we helped a fellow with a broken radiator, 
and in the middle of getting him taken care of, the police called us after they caught him, and I got to say this awesome line. Bro, that was Officer X. They need us down at the station. Broken radiator guy was all, who are you? My brother is 11 years older than me and stayed with my dad with my parents divorced, so I never really got to live with him when we were young. When I was about 14, he barged into my room at 4 a.m. and told me to pack your crap for four days. Our flight leaves in two hours. Soon after, I was on a plane. Turns out he had planned us a trip to Colorado to go snowboarding and told no one but my mom one hour before he told me. My dad working in the World Trade Center heard a huge crash several floors above him. Boss looks at him and says, no time, let's go. He lived. About 11 or 12 years ago, I was taking my dog for a walk in the forest behind the local elementary school. He seemed all anxious to get off leash, so I unleash him since I figure he wants to run around and pee on everything. The moment I let him off leash, he starts barking at me. In hindsight, my best guess is what he was trying to convey was, no time to explain, let's go. And then he bolts. I'm ticked off and start chasing after him, but he was fast, even by dog standards. Turns out on the other side of the woods, there was a middle-aged guy who had exposed himself to a group of young girls. They ran away screaming, and he was trying to make a grab for one of them. It was at this moment that my dog came bursting out of the woods like Lassie or Rin Tin Tin or some crap. My dog was popular among the kids, so they knew him. They screamed his name and ran towards him. The pedo bailed, with his Johnson still hanging out of his pants. I was fully prepared to reprimand my dog for being a jerk. Then I found out what happened. He got steak for dinner. Freshman year in college at a school in Boston. Sick as a dog. Newfound ROTC friend with similar taste as myself comes running into my room and tells me he needs me. I tell him I'm sick and can't go anywhere. He refuses my denial and forces me to come with him. Flash forward 45 minutes in a car and we are arriving at Gillette Stadium. Turns out there is a Halo 3 tournament being held for army recruitment purposes. He is very aware of my Halo skills due to the sleepless nights we spent when Halo 3 first came out. Ended up placing second and along the way beating Jared Mayo. He was physically upset and said he wanted to kill me. Felt awesome to beat a professional football player at something. All of this occurred in the box seating of an empty stadium which we have an amazing view of. So surreal. Army recruitment via Halo 3? Are we fighting the Flood? Is, is Area 51 home to the Flood? Wake up, sheeple! The government is hiding aliens under our freaking noses! Er, er, er. My wife and I went to Scandinavia in the winter for our honeymoon. First Copenhagen, then Helsinki, then Northern Finland. Yes, this is an odd choice. Our flight got diverted, and en route to Copenhagen, our luggage, including all of our winter gear, was lost, and the airline was unable to locate it for the four days we were in Copenhagen. However, we made friends with one of the customer service agents at the airport. We returned to the airport on the day of our flight to Helsinki, still with no luggage, and dreading the arctic cold we were about to fly into, temperatures were in the single digits in Finland, but unable to do anything about it. Magically, we found our luggage at the airport that morning and went through security to our gate. It was about half an hour before boarding when our friend from customer service on the other side of the airport ran up to us and said, follow me and don't ask any questions. We don't have much time and there is something I must do for you. Then he led us through a series of back hallways in the airport to his office. What I'm about to tell you, you must tell no one else, he said. In 20 minutes, our pilots are going to announce a strike and all our flights will be grounded. This was in no way public knowledge. He put us on another flight to Helsinki with a different airline, and we watched in gratitude and amazement from the Finnair terminal as the strike was announced, and our original flight, along with every single other SAS flight leaving Copenhagen, was grounded. Epilogue, we found ourselves in Copenhagen again a year later, and we went to the airport specifically to try and find our friend and thank him, but it was his day off. I'd ask Reddit to pass on my thanks, but I'm pretty sure what he did was against company policy, and I wouldn't want to get him in trouble for doing a good deed for a young couple. I was at a house party over the summer that started going a bit south, so my friend and I decided to just get in the car and drive home. We got to the car and were waiting for the third guy in our group when a very, very drunk guy came up with his red solo cup of beer. We were friendly to him, asked him what he was drinking and all. He decided the best reaction to this was to throw the beer at me while I sat in the car. After this happened, I noticed a group of about seven or eight more drunk people ambling towards the car. They did not look happy. 
my friend decided the best response to this was to go to the back of his car, grab his shotgun and two shells. Oh, crap. He stood next to his car with the drunk people slowly approaching and yelled at them once, get away from my car while loading the shells. They did not stop. He fired once into the air away from them, cocked the gun, and said again, get away from my car. About a third of them left after that, so he fired once more and the rest scattered. He had just fired a gun at a house party. Twice. Oh crap, oh crap, oh crap. Our friend then came out of the house screaming. No time to explain. Let's go. We never went back to that house. TLDR, nearly drunk and brawl broken up by shotgun. Walking home from playing football in the park, and my dad, aggressively speeding down the road in his car, breaks hard next to me. He looks angry as heck, and my little brother is crying, and he sternly says, get in. I roll with it, and he speeds around the park, looking attentively out the window. My little brother points at a group of lads, maybe 16 to 17 years old. One of them is running with my little brother's glasses. He's only about 10 years old. My dad jumps out of the car, rugby tackling the lad to the floor. My dad is huge, and the lads look petrified. My dad absolutely balls at them for about five minutes, and after that, he gets back in the car, and then we go to McDonald's. Dads out there listening to this right now, if you aren't willing to body slam someone for your kid, what are you doing with your life? I was at a sporting event with some friends. Wow, it was 10 years ago. Now I feel old. The bleachers were metal benches on concrete and set up amphitheater style, going down a hill and all the concessions and bathrooms on the top of the hill behind us. It's about half time and I'm thirsty. I also see that it's starting to cloud up. I tell my friends, I'm going to go grab a drink and be right back. I walk to the top of the stairs and I see the biggest, nastiest thundercloud I have ever seen and it's about to crap bricks right on top of us. I hauled it down the stairs, grab the friend closest to the aisle and yell, we gotta go. It takes a second for it to register, but everyone grabs the important stuff and then follows me up the stairs, across the food court and into the bathroom. Suddenly, the temperature drops by at least 10 degrees. The wind gusts. The last friend in almost lost her hat. Seconds later, we hear a huge clang on the tin roof of the bathroom, and then another, and then another. Then out the door, we see golf ball to orange-sized hail everywhere. TLDR, I saved my friends from being caught in bleachers in a nasty hailstorm. It was the middle of the night on a road trip with a friend. She's a city mouse, I'm country. I was driving, she was sleeping, and I started to get sleepy. So I pulled off the highway onto a barely paved road and followed it for a while until I found a wide shoulder to pull off. I parked and we got out so she could have a cigarette. There were loads of stars and we leaned against the car having one of those hushed middle of the night conversations. Then I heard rustling in the woods eight feet from us. At first I ignored it, but then I realized there was a pattern. I'd hear it at the 10 position, then at two, then back to 10. It was more than one thing making the rustling noise and they were getting closer and I realized something was hunting us. So I put on my power voice and told her, get in the car. Her eyes got wide and she hopped in really quick. I jumped in and we took off back to the highway. She turned to me and asked, was it an ax murderer or something? I told her no, it was probably wolves. And she got mad at me for scaring her. She didn't see how wild animals stalking us could possibly be dangerous. Doing some bodywork on a Cessna 350 when my buddy comes running into the shop with his eyes nearly bugging out of his head. Goldfish, come on, follow me! Oh, what is it? I'm busy. Just come here! I have to finish this work. Is it important? Just follow me, it's important! I'm not going unless you tell me what it is first. Cake! Turns out it was somebody's birthday at work and there was free cake in the break room. If somebody could take that cake soundbite and turn it into Space Core from Portal, I would love you forever. So, I had a job driving a taxi. Night shift. I'm waiting in the cab lineup from the next fair when a native Indian stumbles up to my taxi, asks me if I want to buy some beer. No thanks, pal. You sure? I'll sell you a case for $15. Keep in mind, I'm in Canada, and a case will normally cost around $40. I say sure, and he hops in and tells me to drive around the corner to the golf course. I'm skeptical, but I go for it. We arrive, and he runs into some bushes and comes out with a 24-pack of beer. I laugh, pay him, and ask if there's more. Yeah, if you buy 10, I'll sell them to you for 10 bucks each. I gave him $190 more. 
He runs towards the bushes, looks back at me and yells, Well, you gonna come help me with them or what? I follow him to the bushes, and there is a skid full of cases of beer. We take 19 more and load them into the back of my taxi van. I get the nice gentleman's phone number for next time, and we say our goodbyes. Fast forward 15 minutes. I've driven home. It's 3 a.m. I was living in a house in a row of townhomes. Neighbors surely hear me pull up, open and slam my door. I run in, wake up my roommate, and yell, No time to explain. Let's go. He rushes downstairs, puts on shoes, and follows me back to the cab. I open the rear doors, and his jaw drops. Where did you find this? No time to explain, I respond. So, here we are. My half-naked friend and I running 20 cases of beer from the street to my house at 3 a.m. I am amazed that no neighbors had awoken and looked out their windows and called the phone number on the van. When we finish and I had time to explain, my roommate gave me $200 and we went and got another 20 cases, this time from a skid hidden behind some trees at a park on a local lake. TLDR bought 20 cases of beer from an Indian, woke up roommate at 3 a.m. to help rush it into our house. We built a wall between our kitchen and living room with cases of said beer. When you subscribe, make sure to hit the bell to turn on notifications. Put the playlist on in the background to finish listening to all the stories linked at the top of the description. And if you like Am I the Genius, give Am I the Jerk a shot, linked in the description too. Either way, thanks a lot for watching, and we'll see you guys next time.